howdy, hi there. Little bit of Sandra in the sun. Oh! Why? What do you think I smell funny? Oh. You're trying to get my hair tied, you little monster. Hello guys, welcome to 2023. So I have decided that my kind of monthly TBRs are failing me or I'm failing them more like it. Uh, I think I'm a bit more of a mood reader than I thought I was. So instead, of doing like a monthly kind of TBR and like setting up exactly what books I'm going to read in a month and stuff. I am going to just do like entire year goals, like basic, very broad goals. There's a cattail, sorry. My one big goal for this year is to get through my entire physical TBR. So every book that I currently own that I have not yet read. I am hoping by the end of the year to have read all of them. Also, I have already ordered some more books, like quite a few. Th those won't count. Those, <laughs> those are going on the backlog. These are the ones that I've had for like a year or I don't know, a, lo a long time. Okay, way, way too long, way too long. So. We were gonna get through this backlog first. Look, I don't actually think it's that, that many, like considering. Oh no, there's no way I can hold all of them. On this list, I've only got 17. So honestly, that's not that many. I think that's pretty good as far as, as far as the amount of books that I own that I actually haven't read goes. But we are going to go through all of them and let me know if you have read any of these or if any of these are on your TBR and let me know what you think. Let me know what I should prioritize reading first. So the first book on my physical TBR is the one that I am currently reading and that is The Spanish Love Deception and I bought this book ages ago when it was like super duper hyped um, and I'm finally getting around to reading it. And also, what is very disappointing is that my cat loves to chew books. She loves to chew the corners of books. So can you see these two tiny little teeth marks right here? <sighs> Thank you, Ibu. So there's gonna be a few of them that might have this signature mark here. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to stop her. I don't know, she's a menace. She's a menace to society. The Spanish Love Deception is about a girl who has her sister's wedding to go to um, in Spain. However, her ex-boyfriend is going to be there and her ex-boyfriend is also in the bridal party, the brother of the groom, and he is also engaged and she is single but she told her entire family that she's gonna be bring a date like of course to cure this she starts fake dating a co-worker who she thinks they have a very bad relationship <laughs> but i think he's kind of always liked her the whole time i love i love silly little tropes yes give me the fake dating give me grumpy sunshine give me Gimme the guy falls harder first kind of things like yes, 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 yes. Next up we have Sadie by Courtney Summers. I love this. I love this hardback as well. It's so pretty. This is one of those books that I know will be really, really good and I will probably just absolutely chew through it. Um, and that is why I've been like saving it, but I've decided, you know, this year, this year is the year. Just, just read it. Just get into it, Yana. This is uh, a book that kind of takes place in like a true crime format, I think, like a podcast kind of format, um, about Sadie who has gone missing. Oh, that's right. Her little sister got, <laughs> God, I never know books. I never know the books people picking up. Her little sister, Sadie's little sister was murdered and then she went missing. So 
it's it's got a lot of layers it's very like i think it's a thriller i think it's a thriller and i love a thriller and i've just heard that the way that it's written is really unique i've also heard that the audiobook is very good but since i have the physical copy i will be physically reading it although i do love an audiobook Next, I have The Beautiful by Renee Adi. This one I was actually sent to me by Lauren, so thank you very much, Lauren, for sending this to me. And um, she said that it was one of her favorite novels. Um, it is a vampire novel, and I think it might have a little bit of romance in it. Um, and I do love a vampire book, okay? I was a Twilight stan, so... <laughs> Any kind of fun, vampire, sexy, dark kind of romance with other worldly beings is always very interesting to me. What do we have? Next I have Beasts Made of Night and I can't get over just how beautiful this cover is. I love the art on this. I think it looks so, so cool. And I actually did start to read this one. I got like a like a chapter in or something and then I went into a reading slump and didn't pick it up again. I think I was a little bit burnt out from fantasies because this one is a fantasy and it is from like a Nigerian influenced fantasy. You know, it's a whole lot more interesting to hear about different cultures, mythologies and fantastical creatures and everything like that. So, I do remember how this book starts and I did find it very interesting um, and so I'm really excited to read more of it and actually finish it and I think it is, is it a full series or is it a duology? It says beginning of a great saga um, so I'll have to see if I like it and if I want to continue reading the rest of this saga. Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney hardly needs any sort of introduction. <laughs> I love Sally Rooney. I love her writing. I love her books. Uh, I just finished Conversations with Friends and Normal People was one of my all-time favorite books. Does it look a little bit more on the wash? Is it, is it me or is the color different all of a sudden? That's not important. I, I don't know what this is about. Apparently it's about Alice, a novelist and Felix. It's Sally Rooney, obviously going to be some sort of emotional turmoil, romance, crazy thing. It looks like they travel, they travel to Rome. Ooh, that's exciting. But yes, this is another one that I have been saving uh, because I know that I will just absolutely love it. The last two Sally Rooney books I finished in a day each. So <laughs> I know that I'm, I'm just I'm just saving this one up. I'm just saving this one up and it's time. It's time. I got it when it first came out and now it is time to enjoy it. Mm. Oh, another one that I've been saving for a rainy day that I got out, is, that I bought as soon as it came out. Again, Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I love V.E. Schwab. Also, I still have the, <laughs> still have the price tag on the back that reminds me that this was almost $40. Thank you very much. Ooh. But I bought it with a book voucher, so it's very happy. <laughs> what is this? The girl can't talk? The girl can't talk. Yes. Secret, secret, secrets, haunted house, vibes, uh, mysterious girl. Love that. V. Schwab excels at writing mysterious women. Isn't it just beautiful? Again, I'm like, why did I wait? Why did I go out and buy these new releases and then just wait to read them? That's silly. I'm not going to do that this year. That's not the kind of energy that I'm going to be bringing in to the world this year. Girl, Serpent, Thorn, the lovely Benedict got me this one and I am really excited. I also love the art. I love the cover art and I'm very happy that I have a hardback. Love a good hardback. This is an interesting kind of fairy tale twist, I believe where it's like, yeah, what does it say? Sometimes the princess is the monster. So a princess who's got some kind of dark curse that also makes her a little bit of a scary monster. And I quite like that. Quite like that idea. I think it's quite interesting. Powerful women vibes. Love that. 
love to read about scary women, love to be scary women. Let's try bring that energy into this year, shall we? Let's try and be scary women. <laughs> Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes was a Christmas present from my friend Iz in England who came to stay with me. Thank you, Iz. And it is a Medusa retelling. She knows that I love mythological retellings. And we were talking about this book and she bought me this absolutely beautiful hard cover. It's also it's a little bit embossed, which just feels very nice to the touch. I love it. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. I love a retelling. Can't wait to get into this one. This next one was also a gift, and that is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Well, the ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Douglas Adams. I believe this has, oh, it's also a beautiful copy, by the way, beautiful copy. I think it's got the entire series. Kind of, but anyways, I definitely, I don't know if I will get through every single um, book, um, but I do definitely want to read at least Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy this year. I think that would be really nice. Although I've heard great things about the entire series. I think my best friend read it when we were little and really enjoyed it. I'm not so much of a sci-fi girly, but I know that the humor in this is just spot on fantastic. So excited to try it out. All right, I'm guilty of starting series and not finishing them. And that is a habit that I want to leave behind. I'm usually pretty good. I'm usually pretty good. However, I still have not read <laughs> War Storm, which is the fourth and final book in the Red Queen series, which I absolutely love absolutely love so the fact but I, I don't know I don't know something about it I think because it's the last one it's really quite a big boy so it feels a little bit more intimidating than the others but I've got to do it I have to know I have to know how Mare's story ends if you're a fantasy nerd very much recommend Red Queen series the, yeah, the, the last last two books, up and down, up and down, definitely, definitely. Um, so that's why I think I'm also a little bit nervous for this one, because I hope that it ends in a good place. Fingers crossed. Another very hyped book, Bunny by Mona Awad. I have been meaning to read this for ages. I think I was supposed to read it kind of like for Halloween vibes. I thought I'll save it for Halloween. And then I went into a slump then. So I'm gonna say fuck it to all of the seasonal reading or whatever. We're just gonna, just gonna do it. I like, I like spooky stories. I'm, I'm getting quite into horror. I wanna read more horror. Um, I don't know if this is quite horror, but I think it might be thriller, creepy vibes, heard lots of things, heard lots of good things. Bell is fair, Hannah Cappen, uh, very excited to read this one. This is a revenge story uh, about w w women killing men and I quite like, I like those. That's one of my favourite genres. <laughs> my favourite genre is revenge. So again, this is another one that I've heard great things about, so I kept on saving it and putting it off, and no longer, no longer will I be doing that. Also, Fowler's Fair loves a little Shakespearean reference, loves a little Macbeth quote as a title. Very good, very good. Also, quite a cool cover. I just think that the, the design is, makes it very interesting, very intriguing, don't you think? I can't believe I have not read this. I still can't believe I haven't read it. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Holly Jackson. Oh, I have wanted to read this for the longest time. It just sounds exactly up my alley. 
like kind of murder mystery thriller sort of vibes revenge sort of vibes i really don't know much about it but yeah crime thriller yes and i've heard that holly jackson is great at those things so how have i not gotten around to it yet how? Again, I've been saving it. I've been thinking like, well, this is going to be absolutely amazing, so I better save it. No. Ooh, I can't wait for this one. Yes. Ooh, good floppy book as well. Hear that? Not that it's a flop, but... I'm not a spine breaker, so I like to have the book pages floppy. I'm sorry, I can't break the spine. Speaking of breaking the spine, actually, because the next book is one from Jamie. With both eyes. Can you see the spine's all broken? <laughs> Can you tell? It's They Both Die at the End. Super duper popular TikTok book everywhere. Jamie hated it so much that she was like, you can just have this book. So I'm not actually super excited to read this one, but also I feel like I should have an opinion on it. And who knows, I, I might really like it. I might really like it. Me and Jamie aren't the same person. We might have different tastes, but I have a feeling that I'm probably going to agree with her. <laughs> we'll give it a go. And then maybe we rehome it. I don't know. <laughs> Another one that I have been saving for a rainy day. Mexican Gothic by Silvio Moreno Garcia. Oh. I have heard that this book is just absolutely magical, really creepy vibes. I don't know if it's quite horror vibes, but just, it just sounds really like otherworldly and the exact kind of weirdness that I like to get into in books and that I really, really enjoy. Again, this is another one that would be probably great for a Halloween read, but um, if it, I'm just going to read them when I feel like it. <laughs> I don't know what this is about. This is Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I have heard this author's name thrown around a lot in uh, like very highly recommended fantasy authors. And I believe that this is a very, this is the start of a very, very popular series. Um, I got recommended this and uh, gifted this book by a member of my Twitch chat who was like, you absolutely have to read it if you're into fantasy. Don't know what it is about. It seems like more high fantasy, um, traditional hijinks, which I'm here for. That might sound like a read, but if it's done well, then I find them very interesting and I really do enjoy them. So, again, this is a little bit of a monster of a book, so it's a little bit intimidating. I believe in us. I believe in us. I've chewed through, I've chewed through bigger books than this. It shouldn't intimidate me. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. It's getting too hot. Oh my God. Last, but certainly not least, The Priory of the Orange Tree. Talking about thick boys. Look at a big old thick boy right here. Ooh. But I keep on seeing this come up more and more recently. I think maybe the next one was released. I've seen it on the interwebs. Um, so I really need to get into this one. I've heard that it's a very unique uh, fantasy. Again, no idea what it's about. But I feel like the best way for me to get engrossed into a big long story like this is to go in blind and I'm also sure that you guys have um, heard of this before because <laughs> it's everywhere especially at the moment. Queendom, feminist Lord of the Rings, hell yeah, hell yeah I'm so here for it. Escapism, exciting innovative fantasy. I might have to break the spine though. It, it, oh my god, the text is tiny. Tiny. I regret getting the paperback of this. So that is my physical TBR that I will be getting through this year. I will do or do not. There is no try. I wasn't going to do a Yoda voice. I was going to and then uh, I remembered I can't do a Yoda voice. I suck at that. 
Tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what your reading goals are for this year, 2023. This is definitely going to be my main one to get through all of these hefty guys. Please let me know uh, which book you think I should start with. I mean, obviously, I'm already reading Spanish Love Deception, but after that, well, what, what order should I even go in? What are, you, what are your picks? What are your faves? I want to know. I need some guidance. I need some help. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye now. Mwah!